so, am I in the camera? Yes. Oh, okay. It's the whole way you just... <laughs> All right, so I guess I'll start. <sighs> Think. What's your name? My Who name you? You is are? Joe Del Galezzo. My name is Gabriel Gallipoli. Uh, my name is Anton Passarella. I'm 23 years old. I'm from Long Island. I'm from the Bronx, but I live in Harlem. Actually, up. It's in, in the boroughs. Nah. Um, I'm from Long Island, New York. 21. No, wait, why am I saying 21? I'm 22. I drive this thing the exact polar opposite of what his car is in a build. Now I finally drive a Z32 right hand drive Nissan. That's a 1990. It's pretty good. I like it. From Japan. From, yeah, Japan. From Chiba. I have a 1993 S13 Type X that's midnight purple. All OEM parts. Try to keep it as OEM plus as possible while putting my own taste on what I think the car needs to, to be better. Even though I haven't really done anything to make it better, but I'm getting there. I own this huge piece of crap. Um, a lot of people think it's a lot better than it is, but deep down it's still a Nissan. All right, so 24 is my favorite number. That's why that's on the side of the car. The tween is a nickname that was given to me when I was six years old, and all my brothers and sisters call, it, call me that. It's not a kid between 13 and whatever. Like it is now, it's just my nickname. It's always been and I don't consider it with the 13 year old, whatever, that, that's just weird. So that's what my nickname means. It's not the twin, there's no I in there. It's the tween, I guess what got me into S chassis. Uh, if you guys know me, if you follow me, then you already know. Forza has been a big inspiration to me. I know like a lot of people are like, oh, Fast and Furious got me into cars, blah, 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 blah. But for me, it was Forza. Uh, Forza Horizon 1, I think only had the S15, which I loved. And then when I think Horizon 3 finally- uh, Horizon 1 had the S13, but it was the LC. Okay, so I was too broke to buy it. Eventually, I started driving that S13 around. I loved it, fell in love with it. My Jeep broke down. Jodel was looking for a new car. Um, so we both agreed on the S13. So when Anton got his car, we actually bought our cars like at the same time. And he got his car like up and faster three years ahead of me. He had his car like nice for three years. And he was gonna, he, he did, he had a, a black rocket bunny and he molded the fenders on and it looked cool. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna get a white rocket bunny. I'm gonna do the same thing, opposite. I don't know if you guys know who Jay Shell's car is, but his car was a huge inspiration. And we were gonna be like yin and yang, gonna do the whole like same car, but like different, looking really cool. And it's funny because in retrospect, we did the same car, but really different. So like we still did it but not the way we planned. And I, now that I look back, like I would never go Rocket Bunny with the way I appreciate the chassis. And Rocket Bunny's awesome and it's cool, but I'd never want to cut up my car like that unless I had money to blow on like two other S13s because the way the Type X look is so nice. Pretty much what happened, <laughs> the way that I got my 240 was, I was looking online, I found a bunch uh, I was driving down the Long Island Expressway or one of the main highways on Long Island if you know it and my Jeep just broke down in the middle of the road. In less than 22 hours I bought in 240 and I drove it back home, no license plates, no nothing like that. Gabe was in the car. Uh, buying the 240 pretty much, it had an SR20, it was fully carbon fiber wrapped, well not fully, the hood and everything like that had no carbon fiber, it was probably like 8 year old wrap. It was falling apart, the entire engine bay was painted pitch black. Black spray paint, even the air filter, everything was completely painted black. I don't know why. When I first saw it, I was like, shit, this better not be more than like four grand. <laughs> Cause it was beat. The only reason you got it is because it had so many attachments to it. Like the steering wheel was already done. You had the headlights done already. Everything was practically like finished. You had seats in it that he obviously gave away, but they were good for the time. He had a giant shift knob. That was hilarious. <laughs> Cause this guy, I don't know what he did with this car, but if you guys don't know, this thing had a fully black spray painted engine bay and it was the, the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. When we took this thing out, I literally wanted to throw it into the trash. Um, pretty much right after buying the car, I pretty much had everything that I wanted to do to the car set up. I found my list recently, which we talked about in a podcast of my parts that I wanted to buy. A lot of it had to do with Plessy Dip, which Thank God I kind of got out of that, even though I did place it at my wheels like seafoam green at one point. Oh. And <laughs> the car was like six colors. It was gray, white, red, seafoam green, and black. 
and carbon fiber strands still on. There's still yeah. carbon fiber strands on this car. I, know. I bought everything. I bought a fake Rocket Bunny kit off some website. It wasn't JP. I forgot where it was. It did not fit properly at all. Force, I don't want it. Force works. Don't buy it. Um, didn't fit properly at all. I made it work with like some Duraflex front bumper and some eBay Rocket Bunny wing and JP's uh, rear diffuser. Everything started cracking eventually because I molded the entire kit. Um, it looked really good for about a year and then everything started cracking. I also got a Mako paint job. I really cheaped out in the beginning because I was like, there's no way in hell I'm ever going to afford a Rocket Bunny. I'm never going to engine swap my car and all this crap. So I was taking the cheap way with everything which kind of bit me in the ass later, which is why if you guys do follow me, I tell you do it right the first time because you will save yourself thousands of dollars and just not rushing and being stupid. Word. So, I mean, a lot of people hate on me. Well, not hate on me, but a lot of people don't consider me like a real car guy because I don't really wrench on my car. And the people that say this are the people that have garages like this or driveways or even a place that they can get on the floor and work on their car. Meanwhile, I literally live in the middle of Manhattan and I physically can't work on my car. And people are like, oh, you can drive here and then you can do this. I'll lend you my driveway. I'm like, bro, I'm not going to drive an hour out to Queens or to Long Island just to freaking tighten some bolts or do this and that. Like, I don't have the time. And I, I think I differ from most 240 people because a lot of the 240 community, like, I'm 21. I'm still, I'm not like some old, well, not old, but some really grown man. But a lot of the 240 people are 18 to like 25, I would say. And they only care about buying a beat up shell. They just wanna get it on the road as fast as possible. They wanna buy the cheapest wheels, the cheapest kit, put in the cheapest turbo, and try to just get it on the road. And it makes sense, like we don't have money, so I'm not bagging on them, cause like do what you gotta do to get on the road. But then they'll complain, they're like, yo, this broke, that broke, I can't, this car sucks. And I'm like, no, you're just not taking care of it. Like, I wanna do a RB, but I don't have money for it. So I'm just gonna leave my KA as stock as possible so that I can drive it. I had a turbo in there, it blew up, I put another turbo, it blew up. So I was like, bump it, let me take this car and put it back to the stock so I can drive the car. And I think that's how I defer because I care about the origins of this car rather than just seeing it as a drift car. Like people are constantly asking me like, oh, how come you don't drift your car? How come you do this? I'm like, because the car has so much value and like sentiment in it that if I was to drift it and crash it, I would literally cry. And yes, I can rebuild it again. I could buy new fenders. I could do all of this, but that's not the purpose of this car. I'll buy another car if I want to drift. Eventually, like all SR20s do, it blew up on me. I found the peer pressure doing some drifts in a parking lot. Uh, started smoking, turbo went, everything like that. So. Brought it all the way to the Bronx, spent close to a grand between a new turbo, I think it was a T25, and just getting everything fixed. Get it home, within three hours of driving the car, starts overheating. So at that point, after my head blew, turbo blew, just multiple repairs, I kind of just gave up on the whole SR20. One day on my way, I went to go warm up my uh, car for work, and I turned it on, and outside all I hear is, Nah, nah, nah. The car's going up to like 8k by itself, up and down, <laughs> and it was just in rev bombing itself. And I look outside, and I go to my grandfather. I'm like, I need a ride to work. So I think that was pretty much the point where I was like, I'm done with the car. Eventually, the uh, mechanic that put my engine into my car found a huge hole in one of the pipes, probably like that big. Don't know how it got there. It was never an issue before, but I guess that. So pretty much, I gave up. The car sat for about. I want to say eight months at that point with the engine pretty much just shot. I know I probably could have fixed it, but then it would just been another repair, another repair, another repair after that. So around April 22nd-ish of what was it, 2016, 2015? Uh, me, Gabe, and Kyle ripped out the entire engine in front of Kyle's house. It took us about two days. There's a video of that. There's a video of that. It's all on my phone. It's a vlog that never was released before we even started YouTube. Sure All on my phone. While taking the engine out, one of Kyle's neighbors complained between the day of us taking it out. So we had to push it down the block around the corner. We found another kid with a 240 who said, yeah, you can leave it in front of my house. So we left it there. Next day, we pushed it all the way back around the block, finished it, dragged the engine to CJ's house before me and CJ were actually like good friends. 
sold him the engine, got home, went to a wedding, <laughs> which was Jodo's mom's wedding that day. Oh, really? And I was covered in SR20 grease. And uh, my current girlfriend was there. <laughs> Hobby and so. It's not my money, so it doesn't bother me. So after that, after that whole ordeal, my car pretty much sat for, I'm gonna say a year and a half after that, so a total of almost two years. I was walking to work every day, rain, shine, cold, heat, to the point where my managers were like, just tell me if you need a ride, and I didn't. I just kept walking to work. Wasn't there like rocks in your car? That was my Versa. <laughs> it was probably a storm car. So in the meantime of me walking to work and everything like that, I bought an LM7. Kyle talked me into buying an LM7, which is like the precursor to the LS1. Uh, when I brought it to the shop and everything for my car, they're like, no, you're going to want like a full engine tranny, everything like that. You're going to want an LS2. You're going to get bored of this. So I eventually sold the engine to some guy on Craigslist. I found an LS2 on eBay, if anybody wants to know. It was about seven grand. It kind of hurt my pockets a little bit, but the engine and tranny was seven grand, 80,000 miles or so. After my tune and everything like that, the car's pushing about 450 horsepower. Um, the reason why I picked an LS2 was... Like I said, the shop told me I'm gonna be bored of the LM7. I know everyone's like, oh, you could've went 2J, could've went 1J, could've went RB, could've went, could've, 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 all these other cars. Like, oh, I would've went a CA because it's original, well, like, whatever. Oh, you could've put a new SR20 in it. The reason why I went V8, reliability. I haven't had a single problem in a year and a half, if not more, that the car's been back. I drive it, I've driven it to the city, I've driven it back, I've driven it to Jersey, I've driven it through monsoons, literally monsoons. I've driven it through, you name it, it's been through it and not a single problem compared to my SR20 where I couldn't drive it for more than a week at a time and something would blow up. The reliability, zero modifications except for a custom exhaust and a tune and it's pushing 450 and backfires like all hell. That's all you can ask for in an engine, realistically. So as much as I miss turbo noises, I love the Jay-Z, I love the RB engines. I just, I needed something to actually enjoy my car. So I also had XXRs on the car. Uh, XXR 550s are now on Adrian's car. Crappy wheels, but I mean, you can beat the hell out of them and if they break, they break. It's something that you're gonna care about. I eventually got a sponsorship through Modified Concepts for the AG F431s. The inspiration for these wheels was Killionaire, right? was Killionaire with the purple FRS because he had the same wheels. Completely different look, but same wheels. They wanted eight grand for the wheels initially. And when I saw that, I shit my pants. They eventually dropped it on four grand. I think I got a decent, okay deal. It'll be a normal wheel price anyway for custom wheels. I got a sponsorship also through a, a shop nearby for my Rocket Buddy kit. They took off shipping and everything like that. So I got it for about three grand, which is what it says on the website, not including shipping, not including tax and everything like that. So I got it for an okay price. They also wrapped my car for me. I was initially gonna do pink, blue, or white, and I eventually went with yellow off a custom livery that I made on Forza, ironically enough. Yeah, I think when Rocket Bunny came out like a few years ago, it was literally like the coolest thing. Like, not many people had it. There was only like the pink demo car, and then uh, J-Shells had it and I don't even know who else had the Rocket Bunny. I don't think many people. But then as like time progressed, more people started buying Rocket Bunny styled kits, but nobody was buying actual Rocket Bunny kits because everyone was reproducing them and replicating them for a fraction of the price. So people were getting that look and then people, like it was becoming oversaturated because everyone did it. But nobody really took the time to like buy like a real Rocket Bunny. And for those people that don't care, like they'll never know because it's just a wide body kit until like you ask. Because nowadays, like when you see a wide body car or anything, you have to ask like, is this real? Because you never know. It's the same thing that happened with TJ Hunt when he got the Rocket Bunny for his FRS. And then he, his friends, his friend was actually friends with the guy that makes the kits. And then he was like, look, this isn't cool. Like by you supporting the people that buy the fake kits, you're taking money and time away from the people that make the kits and now they can't make them no more because no one's buying them. So I don't even remember why I got there. But you have to ask if anybody's kit is real. And I think in the comments right now, I want you to type how many real Rocket Bunny kits have you seen in real life? I've seen one. Like? That it wasn't at FD. 
I mean, now that I go to like a ton of events, I see a ton, but not on this car. But well, I, meant, I meant 240. One, oh. 240, uh, I've seen one. Uh, I think I've seen. I think I've seen one too. What made me go real rocket money was the fact that I wanted a real kit. We've been talking about real parts for a long time, and having fake parts was just. One, it looked horrible in the car. The car kept, everything was breaking off and it was chipping, it looked horrible. So I wanted to do everything right. So I got a real Rocket Bunny, I got the wrap done properly. CJ did all the decals for me after I created the livery for myself. And I spent, I think, about a month and a half straight sanding this car, cutting this car, taking everything off, and it was a living nightmare in 90 degree weather. We eventually finished the car the morning of Weckfest, New Jersey. Uh, we, I stayed up 24 to 28 hours, I think. Finished the car at 4 a.m., got home at 5 a.m., showered, my girlfriend showered. We left, got to Weckfest at 6.30 a.m. to just make it to the show one time with the car just finished. So we revealed the wrap and the entire body kit and everything like that for everyone. And we pretty much slept the entire day after that in the car and at the show. It was, it was a freaking nightmare. I don't like going early because it's never ready and we never do anything for hours. So, but that's not our fault. That's the me. Yeah. I like getting food when we're waiting. This car's been through everything with me. I know people give it a price tag on their car. People can buy and sell cars like crazy, but I think I've already been through like eight cars myself, but this is the one car that has been sitting and standing the longest. A lot of people can just be like, oh, your car's not worth that, your car's not worth that. Realistically, if I were to put a price tag on it, if you want to go number value and money value, my car would be worth around $40,000 with every dollar that's been put into it. I know I would never get that. I would get maybe 20, if on a good day, to some guy that just had money to blow. But to me, I think the car's priceless. It's been through numerous times in my life, through just bad times, good times, depression. It was there for my stepmother's death when I was just, could just take it for a drive. And it's just been there for the past four years and it's gotten me away from any trouble besides doing burnouts in front of cops, which they let me go. But any other trouble like that, I've pretty much been away from because of this car. And it's gotten me great friendships. It's reinforced my friendships that I currently have. And I don't think I would trade that for anything. So that is why my 240 is priceless to me. I forgot about that. So the reason why this car is in the garage right now is I'm leaving it at my father's house. It's going to be sitting, it's going to be sitting for a while. It's going to be sitting for maybe a year, like Gabe said, indefinitely, maybe longer. I plan on buying an E36. I love this car to death and I put so much work into it that I just don't have the courage to drift it. I mean, I've been sliding it in the streets recently, but like Jodal pointed out earlier today, my diffuser was hanging off because I took a nice 30 mile an hour drift earlier and hit a pothole while doing it. Gabe's face. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna be building an E36. It will be something special and it will have the balls beat out of it, I promise. But that'll be another project. I will put my own spin on it like I did with this car. So it will be nice, it will be something special. It won't be, it'll be a missile, but it'll be a nice missile. So that's my next project. When I eventually have money and eventually have a career or more money to spend, for this car, I'm gonna finish the entire interior. I'm gonna make it really nice. I'm gonna try and reinforce everything. Um, I gotta do brakes, I gotta do my rack and pinion, I have to do control arm. So I have to get the car just like spoofed up pretty much. The interior is, I would say probably halfway, but there is little things that need to be touched up and everything like that. Um, no turbo, nothing like that is ever in plan. So I'm sorry for everyone who's like, ooh. I, I, love, the, I love the V8, I miss turbo noises, but it's just something that I don't ever have planned in my near future or ever. I'm not gonna say ever because you never know, but never. Are we gonna see you at H2O? H2O 2019, I will be there. I don't know if I'll be here with that or with the E36, but hopefully we will see. I just don't wanna rush anything, so we'll see how that goes. I love H2O. I think it's really fun. Um, it's fun with the girls that come to. I like going out and I like seeing the cars. Who wouldn't wanna go? If you could change one thing about the car, what would you change? I loved it when it was black, but I love that it's yellow and it works. But I just love black, so I'm biased. 
Can you change it back to black? No, that's the thing. I miss the black, but maybe the interior could be a nice matte black with the, the cherry blossoms. The AC had a better stereo. If you could go back in time, would you change you getting an S13? If I could go back in time, I would change the S13 that I got. No offense to the owner, to the previous owner, because he's awesome and he's helped me a ton. But I would probably buy a real 180, and I would just, and if I couldn't, I would just look for an overall better chassis. And I probably would have picked up one with an SR. So I would still get an S13. If you guys want, subscribe. Click right here. Subscribe or follow me on Instagram at the tween, or you can follow all my friends below, which I will put right here. They all have Instagrams, they all have cool cars, except for Jodel, it's a type X. Follow all of them, uh, be highly appreciated. I gave up my wheel specs like candy while other people are out. While other people <laughs> just. <laughs> Okay, so this was literally last year, Christmas time. It was two days before Christmas. I have my car parked outside because I believe I couldn't get up my driveway without taking my bumper off and I was just a little lazy. And the car wasn't running because um, I believe there was a starter issue and I just didn't want to fix it until literally a week before I got hit. So, it was parked outside of my house. Snow was covering completely. There was like two feet from the um, the street and my car because I parked on the grass. And some kid literally swiped the car, destroyed my wheel hub, so I couldn't drive it. Then I got hit again, but this kid destroyed the back of my car, destroyed the tail light, bent the whole back frame. My bumper was completely shot. My trunk couldn't line up. It was probably the worst thing and they only gave me two grand for it and I spent a lot of money so I'm back at square one all right thank you all right, I love you. All right. damn don't even say I love you back yeah. they did oh can I uh, I know you don't say it no I didn't hear him say it back I said, you I said damn, first can I uh, <laughs> Why, why are the 10 neighbors calling me? Like, <laughs> That's what I thought he was going to say, that the neighbors are complaining about the drift. Um, where the hell were we? Okay. So, it's going to be like, people are just going to be scrolling into it and be like, the story or whatever, and you're going to help me in this video. Like, oh, it's a crazy, I've seen that thing on that chassis, what, what's this guy's story? But no one knows who you are. Who the hell is this? <laughs> who is this kid? <laughs> who is this kid? Yeah. Forza has been a big, uh, Inspiration. <laughs> Upon getting the 240, pretty much, I can't do this with her here. It's too awkward. It really is. It's awkward. Because you're smiling. Damn. Um, eventually. What is he doing? <laughs> there is no signal in here. <laughs> We're in the middle of nowhere. Would you ever come down to it's me or the car? Damn. What? Probably. What do you mean? If like you, an ultimatum. It's me or the car. Like you've ever gotten to a single point where you spent like a hundred thousand dollars. You just got fed said. up with being second. Oh, well, you've already said that car. it's me. We're seventy. You still haven't married me. What's the problem? No, that's not an option though, because it's me. So Damn, I so win. That is the option. <laughs> there is no ultimatum. No, there's no ultimatum. That's not. But I wouldn't ever make you. That the car's a part of us. So it's not a. If or 